Few concepts have elicited as much study and commentary in recent years as that of globalization. The term refers to interconnections among states and peoples throughout the world. International trade has increased substantially over the years. The current economic downturn affects virtually all countries. The proportion of the world's population linked by communications continues to increase. The carbon dioxide emissions in one country affect the climate in other countries and so on and so on. One impact of globalization widely reported is that it has given rise to an increasing number of separatist movements. Well, to discuss the rise of globalization and separatism, I have with me human behavior specialist, Dr. John DiMartini. Welcome. Great to have you. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Globalization is a great phenomenon, in my opinion. If we have to look at how ICT has revolutionized the way we communicate, the way we live, the way we interact, I think it's, it, it's awesome. Uh, but academics have raised this issue, which they call the threat of separatism. What are your thoughts on the subject? Well, if we look over the last so many thousands of years, there's no doubt that we came from a nomadic environment to eventually a family environment, to a kinship environment, to a township environment, to a community, to a city, to a state, to a nation, to a world environment, and soon a solarization, that's our next step. Not globalization, but solarization as we go into space. People like Elon Musk and Richard Branson and Peter Damientis, these guys are basically thinking globally and now astronomically. We are not going to stop that. But if we go too far with technology, uh, and we ex and, and do it at the expense of individualities and even ecology, mm -hmm. nature has a way of slowing that process down. So it's inevitable that we're going to do that. But along with it, every culture is made out of countercultures. And there's going to be a law that I call the law of the one to many that's going to rule it. As we approximate the one, we also fragment things into the many. Mm -hmm. And uh, just like in our body, we have anabolism that builds and catabolism that breaks down. Mm -hmm. We must have both in order to make resilience and adaptability to changing environments. Sure. So if, we, if, if the, the European Union joins together, but everybody in the Union has different languages, mm -hmm. there's both a unification and a diversification. And it's essential to not try to unify everybody too quick and too fast and everything else, make everybody one thing. Yeah. And at the expense of individual, otherwise they'll fragment and they'll fight. And we've seen the first breakup in the Eurozone. It's essential. And if you want to look at the history, there was a book called The Balance of Powers that came out of Harvard University many years ago. And if you go online, you can actually see over the last, oh, 10,000 years, the rise and falls of nations and the building and destroying of nations. And they separate and unite mm -hmm. over time under time-lapse photography. The, the Russian, the, Europe, the you know, Soviet Union was once a union of a bunch of nations and then that was fragmented. So it's, it's oscillating between one and many constantly. And if any time it gets too big into one, it becomes a monopoly, and it, there's forces to break the monopoly down into individualities again. So it kind of balances it, it, it is, It's called the balance of powers. Yeah. So nature needs both one and the many. Just like we have a monarchy and a democracy, if we get too democratic, nobody can make a decision. Mm -hmm. Somebody has to stand up and rise out of it. Yeah. If you get too monarchy, you cut an autocracy, and nobody gets to meet their needs. So nature forces things into a balance of the one and the many, but that grows. The one and the many goes from a, a family to a city to a state and just keeps getting bigger one and many's. And someday we'll probably have a solarization as we're, we're colonizing the planets. We'll probably have uh, the same law again on a solar system level or possibly in the future. We just discovered a new planet in, Al in Proxima, Alpha Centauri Proxima. So it looks like there's gonna be another planet we're gonna be looking for. Someday it'll be probably on a bigger scale. Mm -hmm. But that law of the one to many seems to be a universal law of human behavior. When you move into a city and you've never been there and you don't know anybody, you tend to want to join in. The second you join in, you want to stand out. It's, it's part of a nature because you don't want to be completely like everybody else. Absolutely. So it, it, it's a normal process of, of development in sociology mm -hmm. to have this the next level of integration and disintegration. Mm -hmm. Just like in the calculus, you have integration and differentials you have both build and destroy mechanisms. In countries and in companies and in even family dynamics, you have this building and destroying mechanism. Mm -hmm. Unification, diver diversification. You have to have that for resiliency and adaptability to continue to grow to ever greater uh, concentric spheres of sure. management. I think Africa is going through a bit of an 
identity crisis. We're if seeing it right here now. What has to that? Exactly. I mean, we want to develop ourselves the history of exporting commodities. People are talking about that, moving away from that, becoming less dependent on the West, wanting to boost intra-regional trade, wanting to trade more within the continent. It's kind of like an identity crisis, a separatism wanting to break away from the global tribe. And it's great if I have to reflect on what conversation I had with you previously where you said nations have to also look at the seven areas and develop themselves in seven areas to be competitively, competitively uh, to have a competitive advantage, etc. So in a way, it's building towards that. But like you say, it's about finding that balance, isn't it? You, get so it, you don't want to cut off the rest of the world, but you want to be in a strong, you want to be in a strong position as a nation. You, 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 just like in people in a company, yeah. They, they need a company to organize it that's a big company to organize the whole thing. But the leader of the company has to consider the individuals, the individual departments, however it's structured. They need to appreciate the many and the divisions and appreciate their necessity because otherwise it doesn't work. So you have to appreciate the one and the many. And that's, that's, that's not going to be violated as far as human society. If we go too far one way, nature forces the other way. Mm -hmm. And globalization and separatisms like that are part of the oscillating systems necessary for growth. And uh, the more we are able to care enough about ourselves to know what we value, the more we are able to care enough about the collective values, yeah. the more that is fluently organized and allows it to be uh, appreciated. Yeah. But if not, we tend to think that the idealism is we have to all unify. But at the same time, if we all diversify, we don't grow. We have to have both. Sure. It's essential to have both. What are the drawbacks of separatism? Well, if we get to separatism, we're back into the situation where my group's better than your group. And we, 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 we're spending time on conflict instead of time on productivity. But at the same time, individuality, the, the, co -op, the competition between individuality generates creativity and innovation and ideas. Otherwise, we have a, a monopoly that just stagnates and becomes mm -hmm. a tradition. And then somebody's got to be the revolutionist in the tradition to break the tradition, to break it through to the next level. So nature is forcing this mechanism to make sure that we keep innovative and creative. We have enough tradition to, to sustain a unification, but enough innovation and creativity and individuality to compete. You have to have cooperation and competition. It's been shown, it was called creative destruction and destructive creation mm -hmm. in evolution. We need both. Uh, nature's done it. You have prey and predator, and you have uh, a union and division. It's, it's a pair of opposites that make up nature. Mm -hmm. And we've seen how extreme separatism is playing out. If we have to look at the war on terror, the terror attacks in Europe, and that's a kind of separatism. Well, that's a part of separatism. Uh, that's, well, that you're fighting, to, you're fighting to, for your identity, your identity to be recognized, and there's this deep-seated, resentful uh, tension that's taking place here as well. Well, we see the same thing in, in religious thought. Mm -hmm. You have, uh, for instance, I'll use Christianity example, but we could take almost any religion to it. You have a thing called Christianity, which is an overview, which is a global phenomenon. But then you have individual sectors of that. And the sectors keep it uh, innovative and creative and individualized so it meets the needs of individual value systems. Mm -hmm. If you had one system and that was the belief system and it didn't meet the needs, it would fall apart. It had to have enough of a working variety to have uh, you know, a whole global thing called Christianity. Mm -hmm. So I think that's the same thing in business. It's the same thing in social structure, politically. And I think we evolve as human beings at that. We need that mechanism. Mm -hmm. If we get the same thing all the time, we get bored. If we get differences, we get burned out. If we find a balance of similars and differences, one in many kind of thing, we end up having the maximum growth and appreciation and fulfillment in life. Fantastic talking to you. We love having you with us. So thank you so much for your time. Thank you.